Greetings, and welcome to my fourth video on designing and building virtual reality cockpits. Uh, if you've been watching this series, you know that in the first two, I designed some pretty rubbishy cockpits that were fairly easy to build. Uh, in the third video, I showed you a paper model of a cockpit design that I really wanted to build. At the time, I despaired that I would be able to build it myself because I live in Korea and do it yourself in this country is really alien. So it took me some time and effort to have the materials delivered to my home and also to obtain the tools I needed to build this. But what you're looking at right here is called the STAR seat, my slightly clever acronym, stick, throttle, and rudders, making it the STAR seat. The STAR seat is built out of half inch plywood, exactly one half of a standard sheet of half inch plywood. Um, I was a little bit concerned living in Korea where mostly they use the metric system, but uh, when I went to the lumber yard, I did discover that uh, plywood in Korea is exactly the same as plywood in the United States and that it is precisely four feet wide and precisely four feet or eight feet long. Uh, of course, if you do any handiwork in the United States, you know that plywood must be an exact size and that any person who's doing construction who got uh, the wrong size plywood would probably angrily return it to the lumber yard. So um, anyway, uh, it worked out really, really well for my design uh, to have the sheet like that. And there should be a link uh, to my plan underneath uh, this video in the description for this video here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, moving forward, what else is this? Uh, this star seat constructed of, but what we have here are 72 millimeter hinges, uh, just standard cheap, cheap hinges that uh, I found. I found at what we would call a dollar store uh, in Korea. Something that corresponds roughly to a dollar is a chun on note, and so a thousand Korean won bought me two of these hinges. Um, there are a total of 19 hinges like this uh, in it. Uh, they are held in with 12 millimeter screws, which of course I had to order separately uh, and order specially because uh, the hinges came with junk screws. There are a few bolts and some wing nuts involved in the design of all of this. Um, <clears throat> the tools that I used, I uh, just want you to know that no power tools of any kind were used in the design here. Uh, I used a handsaw. This is a 20 inch handsaw. I got a very nice sharp blade and also a thin blade which came in very, very handy. Um, for the hinges, you can see I messed these up here, but uh, I had to do what are called mortises uh, where you chisel out the, um, the wood in order to make room for the hinge. Uh, in that case, I did use a utility knife, a one inch chisel, and I couldn't find my hammer so I just used this spike for tapping it out everything worked out really, really well. Uh, I had to drill a couple of holes, so I have this nice hand drill. I was actually really quite pleasantly surprised by how easy drilling holes is with something like this. I did not need a power drill, so that here is a $15 tool as opposed to a $100 tool. That needs electricity and this one doesn't. Uh, and I used a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, I also used an awl, which I don't seem to have around here for simply pushing pushing in the holes to get the holes started on this, but that's basically it. It was just a handful of very simple hand tools that were used in order to design this, or to construct this. <clears throat> um, the seat is cushioned with what was originally a child's puzzle mat, uh, child's flooring. You can find this kind of stuff at any normal department store or uh, supermarket. Um, I, all I did was uh, put the puzzle pieces together the way I wanted, cut them the size I wanted, and they're held together with wood glue. And I, I thought the star design was pretty cute because I was able to uh, match it with the name of the seat. Now a couple advantages that this has is that it's completely foldable or collapsible. Um, the seat pops up. There's a stash area under here for your bowl of Wheaties or whatever you want to put under there. Uh, you could also put a compact computer or a caseless computer under there and then hook the controllers directly into it. Uh, anyway, the seat pops up. If you want to, 
You can always pump the rudder pedals up as well. Uh, and these are sitting on one inch casters, two one inch swivel casters that are screwed in. Now if you pump this back a little bit, this center brace folds twice. And then you can just pull the whole thing right up. And it folds up quite nicely. Now, right along here, I know it looked like it was about to fall. That's because it's mostly floating on two three-inch casters along with this 3060 triangle of plywood, which I've got held on this bolt. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but down here, I simply have a piece of uh, a Velcro circle. So there, that holds in. And now I can roll this thing around my room basically anywhere I want it to go. Put it back together. Oh, and uh, what you might notice is when things are sitting like this, that the uh, throttle and joystick are sitting upside down, whereas the rudder pedals are not. And of course, if you wanted to load this thing into a car, you'd probably want to get some help because this thing likes to fall right back apart into its original shape. But you could just pop that up and then this entire unit will then go with the controllers all facing up, sitting in a car. Also here, the uh, molding kind of pops off fairly easily, but it's all, it also goes right back on quite easily. That just pops on or slides on if you prefer. And so then I can quite easily simply slide this all right back out. Put the whole thing right back together. into its standard configuration. Now something you might be thinking is, that's half inch plywood and it's held together with cheap, flimsy hinges. Oh, here's one of the hinges. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see it a little better. Compare it with my hand, that's two and seven eighths inches or 72 millimeters. That's a cheap hinge. So if you can see me, clearly I'm over 100 kilos, maybe about 110 kilograms or 230 pounds. The question is, are these triangles going to hold? And the fact of the matter is, I was quite worried about this while I was designing it, which is why I went with the Mortises, and I was very careful with the Mortises in the back holding that back triangle on. So, We've got that straight. I also mortised the uh, three-inch casters in the back and included them so that they were almost exactly uh, in the same place as the uh, triangle when it's hitting the floor so that they're included as part of the support system. Now getting into and out of this is just a little bit tricky because of the 30 degree steep angle. So you just kind of have to slide into it. But it turns out that it holds my large size quite well. Here I've got my throttle, got my joystick, and I've got my pedals, and I'm all set and very, very comfortable. And of course, getting out's a little bit tricky, but I can slide back up and stand up without too much difficulty. Uh, so what I have here is a completely portable cockpit system that folds up fairly easily, rolls around on its own wheels, uh, holds what are, as far as I know, the very best in the world of uh, computer, virtual reality, PC-based gaming uh, controls for this kind of machine. And it looks like I'm pretty much ready with a little more configuration to play Mac Warrior. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and happy gaming.